as parents, when we get frustrated with the symptoms that come out in our kids, so not being organized, being late, getting out the door, keeping notes and homework and all those kind of things, I think what I see a lot is when the parents jump in to do the things for the kid because of their own discomfort and their own anxiety, that's a huge piece. And I sometimes I describe it as the the parent is taking on the executive functioning development of the kid when they jump in to do those tasks for the kid. Yep. And it's hard for parents to let go sometimes or to see their own part in the problem i guess right or in the in the journey and and maybe and how i remember you i asked you sort of in a in a clinical manner something along these lines of bringing the parent into the conversation you gave me such a good answer um so maybe you could just talk a little bit about that and then what was the answer i gave you don't leave me in suspense <laughs> well i don't want to say it because i want to hear you say it again <laughs> okay if i totally okay. forget what i told you jump in okay. and I, remind I, I me will. what my okay. wisdom was okay. i'd appreciate yes. it yes <laughs> i will i will <laughs> um okay so look i think when we think of treatments for adhd particularly in the context of kids and teens the research is very clear that medicine plus therapy works really well. Well, that statement applies to ADHD across the lifespan, right? Pills don't teach skills. Um, If you learn the skills, but can't really use them because you can't focus, you don't really benefit from them. So ideally, combination medicine and therapy. There's good research for kids and teens that parent management psychotherapy, so parent support is very helpful. Individual psychotherapy for younger kids, you can only accomplish so much. Um, in teens, there's more ability to work. Cognitive behavioral therapy, which is the best researched model for adults with ADHD, works quite well. It teaches skills and helps with the thinking and the emotions and things like that. But to be able to do that, you have to like think your thoughts, but then also like think about your thoughts and analyze your thinking. And when you're a young kid or a teen, depending on your maturity, your executive functioning, you may or may not do that very well. But there's absolutely a role for kids to learn some behavioral strategies but parent management training is really important. Now, a lot of parents feel like this is parent blaming, right? Okay, so my kid's having trouble. Um, I was worried I didn't want to come because I was worried you were going to blame me as mom or dad or whatever. And now I come here and you tell me I got to go to therapy because my kid has troubles. Obviously, you think it's me. And the answer is not at all, right? Um, In my view, parents are not the cause of ADHD but they absolutely need to be part of the solution, right? ADHD is predominantly genetic, right? We think of a biopsychosocial model. So there's the biological component, the psychological, the social, but it's so genetic, genetics play a big role. So we don't choose the genes we pass on to our kids, at least not now, and probably not for a good long time. So you didn't control it, you didn't create it, it is what it is, right? But I always think like if a kid's diagnosed with diabetes, and they need to manage blood sugar, their parents will go to the diabetes education center with them and they learn what to do. What do we do when the blood sugar is high? What do we do when it's low? What do we do when he goes to soccer? What do we do when he goes to his friend's house, right? And they learn strategies and structures and the parents, you know, essentially create structure around their kid and make sure that any responsible adult knows what should be done in different situations. And that's exactly what we're looking for for ADHD. Now, if any parent's gone through parent management training and psychotherapy, they realize it's a lot about self-regulation, right? Because as you described, your kid with ADHD can do things that gets under your skin and challenges you. And as we talked earlier, many adults are just busy as anything. And because ADHD runs in family, they may actually be ADHD-ish or have ADHD that's not diagnosed yet. A lot of parent, a lot of adults I see say, I came in for ADHD assessment because my kid got diagnosed and I looked at the list and said, oh my goodness, sounds like me, right? So it can run in families. There may be more than one ADHD member. And so a lot of the parent management therapy is learning to be present without the emotion dysregulation. Your kid will try to push your buttons and you need to do your best to stay calm. We are all human. There are no perfect parents. 
In fact, if you try to be a perfect parent, you're not going to be a perfect parent. This is how we get the helicopter parents and the new one, the lawnmower parents who let me clear the way so yeah. my child will never fall and scrape his knee snow or her knee and first. whatever. <laughs> yes, no plow, whatever, right? It's like I will clear the path so my little sweetie doesn't have any trouble in life. Well, if they don't have any trouble, then they don't grow up well, right? Like we all have yeah. to grow and learn. So yeah, it's a lot of self-regulation. It's behavioral strategies. Uh, it's a challenge, but I really encourage parent management training and it's not parent blaming, um, but it really makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and awesome. let me share one other thing. Can I share yeah, one more please, thing? Please. So, you know, yeah, yeah. one of the hardest things with teenagers, just thinking about adolescence, you know, so many teens are dealing with challenges and it just seems to be getting worse even post pandemic. So many challenges around social issues, bullying, cyberbullying, drug and alcohol issues, sex and sexuality, gender issues, other things. And they may come home and their parent, like many parents do, says, get to do your homework. I'm not doing it now. Well, you're misbehaving. Pick up your jacket. The hook is two inches from where you dropped it. Please don't make me every day come and do it. And while we're at it, let's get up to your room and clean it up. It's been more than a week and you haven't done it and it's disgusting. And the kid retreats to their room, slams the door, gets on social media and doesn't say another word to their parent. Meanwhile, that day, they may be considering self-harm or suicide or whether there's any point in pursuing education or their future. And their parent, who loves them so deeply, wants to be the person that they can trust, that they can talk to about all these really difficult things that they're facing, especially post-pandemic world where school got disrupted, social life got disrupted, exercise got disrupted, etc. And they won't go talk to their parent because they got yelled at because their jacket wasn't put on the hook, their dish wasn't put in the dishwasher, and they're behind on their homework and their room's disorganized, right? And I'm not saying to parents... Don't hold standards for your child. Of course, you need to. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying if you work with a therapist and realize and you prioritize, what are the top things? There are some non-negotiables, right? You need to be home at this time and you got to make sure the door is locked, okay? Like for safety. Um, you're not driving while drunk. You're not, you know, taking a weapon to school, like whatever. There are okay. absolute, you're not sticking a, you know, metal into an electric socket, right? There are absolute things that cannot be negotiated. However, there are many things you can close your kid's door, right? You can pick up the jacket and say, I'm not going to fight over this tonight because I want to talk to my kid about their future and their education and be there to support them and listen to their fears and help to build them up, right? So obviously this is oversimplified and every individual is an individual, but I think, you know, parents, sometimes we need to think about things differently uh, and getting professional help when needed can make a dramatic difference.